today I'm going to be talking about all the things I've been obsessed with over the month of January. Through the month or during the month, whatever. All of that. I got some makeup products, I got some face stuff. I obviously don't have words, that's what I don't have, but I have everything else and so we'll just jump into it. So my first obsession for the month of January is actually something I got like last week or two weeks ago, but it doesn't matter because it's January and I'm obsessed with it and I cannot put this down. And it is the Kat Von D Pastel Goth Palette. Oh my goodness gracious. I couldn't wait to mention this to you guys because I almost didn't buy it and it would have been a huge mistake. I almost didn't buy it mainly because with any sort of bright color palette, I usually end up not using it to be 100% honest. And also, I will open it so you can see the magic that is inside. The pastel shades, any other palette I've ever bought with pastel shades, they're always the weakest shades of the palette. They end up being patchy and weird and just not my favorite shades in any palette, but not this palette. This palette is absolutely amazing. All these shades are super, super pigmented. I was so pleasantly surprised. And for being a light pastel shade and then also being matte, you have this concern of it just not having any sort of payoff or just not meeting your expectations like I was mentioning before. This is just on another level and it was really well thought out because you have a white shade here which is perfect to kind of set your, uh, what am I thinking of, your eyeshadow primer with. And it gives you a really nice bright base. So you can go in with any of these shades and just start, you know, going to town, going crazy, creating all these looks. They're also amazing. I'm wearing two of the shades. I'm wearing this purple dope shade here. And then this kind of, uh, what shade is this? Like a lilac kind of shade called Meow. This whole palette is just pure magic how it happens because they're not neon shades. They're definitely pastel, but they're like super bright and super pigmented still. I'm like, what kind of sorcery is this? I don't know, but I love it. And if you've been considering it, you gotta get it. And also I have to mention just because it is so freaking awesome, this packaging though, it is so sick. It's so good. It is so good. It's got the super cool font and then this fading rainbow thing. I don't know. It's so good. Another thing that I'm actually wearing and that I've been obsessed with this month is this Anastasia Beverly Hills liquid lipstick. I don't know what she calls her liquid lipstick. Uh, liquid lipstick. That's all she calls it. Okay, so that's what it is. Uh, in the shade Potion. I always want to call it Poison. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's Potion. That's what it's actually called. It's just a very dark purple shade, almost black with a little plum undertone. That's an extremely confusing way to describe it. But what I really love about this shade is I obviously love black lipstick, but I was wanting something a little different, but not too different. You know, I wasn't wanting to like branch off too much. I wanted to keep it dark but just a little twist, you know? And this shade has been amazing for that. I just always reach for this. And I'm like, wait, you just used that, girl. And I'm like, I don't even care. I love it so much that I almost wanna say that it's the new black for me, but then I know it's way over dramatic and I don't actually mean it. So I'm sorry, black lipstick, I don't mean it. But I also kinda love this. Moving on. The next thing I've been obsessed with this month is actually something that was sent to me and I really didn't even know what it was. So I just started like putting it all over my face, which story of my life. Anyways, I ended up being absolutely obsessed with it and now I use it every single day. Can't live without it. I can't look at my foundation or my face the same without it. It's this primer by Milk Makeup and it's called a blur stick and that's kind of what was confusing me a little bit because it is actually like a skin tone shade. So I was thinking maybe it was a foundation. Uh, so I just started putting it all over my face thinking it was foundation and I was like, there's something showing up. What is happening? Gosh, I'm so smart. Anyway, so I looked into it and found out it was actually a primer. Use it as a primer and I'm obsessed with this. First of all, the packaging is super interesting. It's like a twist up primer and it's got this balm looking thing. That's why I thought it was a foundation, but it actually doesn't show up any color at all. When I realized that this was primer, I was like, oh hell no, this is not gonna work. I have dry patches all over my face. I'm just like the Sahara Desert up in here and I just had a feeling that this was gonna pick up all my dry patches, show them to the world, and then I was gonna put foundation over it. It was just gonna be like, lizard girl like that's what i thought for sure but that's not what happened at all the primer itself it just i don't know i 
just kind of press it on my face and then I just kind of just do this, kind of smooth it in. And there's something about this that's absolute magic. It's also super weightless. I just feel like it's my skin. I'll show you guys up close on my face. Up close, personal, HD. I don't know if you can tell that my foundation looks so smooth. My face is not that smooth, you guys. It's not. It does not look this smooth. It does not happen like this. I don't know. I even look at my forehead and I'm like, whose forehead is that? That's definitely not my forehead. My forehead's got all these dry patches, super textured. It looks almost like, you know, you put some, like, crepe paper down and then you try to put foundation over it. And now it just looks like this, like, Mod Podge forehead. I don't know if I would have picked this out on my own because I normally don't even use primers. This changed the game for me and I have to give a big shout out and thank you to Milk for sending this and I've totally changed my mind about primers so absolutely love this. Again it's the Milk Makeup Blur Stick. Obsessed with this. Gotta have it. Yes. Next. So kind of going in the same direction as skin situations. Um, obviously, like I said before, I have super dry skin. I normally get really bad dry patches in general on my forehead, a little bit right here. And in the winter time, it just ends up like being that times a million. I've been looking for some new products that will still allow me to like keep up with the parts of my skincare that I never want to change and I'm obsessed with and then kind of introduce some other things that can help me save my skin because it's so thirsty. So anyways, I went out into the world of the interwebs and was looking for the best moisturizer for super duper dry sensitive skin and I saw this and this is the first aid beauty ultra repair cream. This is the intense hydration. It says use to hydrate dry parched skin, relieve minor irritation and itching due to eczema and other conditions for the face and elsewhere. So you don't only have to use it on your face, you can use it anywhere you want, anywhere your heart desires. And let's just say I'm obsessed with this. This is my dream come true. This is what I've been looking for in every single moisturizer I've ever tried in my entire life of dry skin. I got the six ounce tub, but I could use an entire vat of it and swim in it on the reg because I'm not obsessed with this. It looks kind of thick. It looks almost like frosting or something, uh, but on the face, it's super light but does the job. I use it before bed. I use it in the morning before I get ready. It doesn't make my makeup smear or slime or slide off anywhere. It doesn't make my eyebrows get weird. If you guys know what that feels like when you put your moisturizer on and then you try to do your brows and they're all slimy and weird. Definitely doesn't even do that. So it like really absorbs nicely and evenly. This did not break me out. This did not irritate my skin. And the one thing I love the most about it is it worked so fast. I mean, I, maybe it was even one night that it worked, but I'm like, realistically, it was probably a couple days before my dry patches completely started disappearing. I don't know why I never tried this one. I think maybe I get too like sidetracked by packaging from other brands that I wasn't uh, initially drawn to this. But oh, man, if you have dry skin, you have got to try this. So the last product I'm going to mention before I get into miscellaneous items or one item uh, is this Urban Decay Chill Setting Spray. It's just their makeup setting spray, but it's this new line, I guess, called Chill. Basically what I was looking for was for a setting spray for dry skin. Um, if you have really dry skin and you try to use other setting sprays, I don't know if you guys experience it but I do, I just end up feeling like my face just feels so terrible. It's almost like it dries up my face. Instead of making my foundation like set really nicely and look really pretty, it ends up making my foundation look almost crumbly. Like it doesn't look right. I spray it on like, oh, this is amazing. So many people use this and they love it. And then I look in the mirror and I'm like, what the hell just happened to me? I was looking for a setting spray that would also kind of moisturize it and I wasn't finding it. And I think there's like lately a couple have come out but I really wanted to try this one. It says it kind of makes your face feel cool and chill while hydrating it. Um, I don't know. I feel like it's a little dramatic. I didn't feel like it was like overwhelmingly cool on my face as much as I just felt like I was spraying a mist on my face, like a refreshing mist. But I didn't buy it for a chilled feeling on my face. I actually bought it just to make my, my dry ass skin look natural with foundation on while kind of keeping my foundation from breaking up over time and like making it last longer. So finally, us dry skin girls and dudes have a makeup setting spray that will work for us and not make us look like the Sahara Desert and that's all that matters. So that is why I love this. 
and it is a favorite of January. So my very last obsession of January, which actually I started watching in December, it aired last year, it's a TV show, aired last year, but I didn't start watching it till very end of December, finished it in January, and now I'm so excited about it that I feel like I need to geek out about it with somebody. I know there's gotta be some of you who have seen it as well, but it is the TV show The Exorcist. Oh, it's so good. It's just so good. It's so good. It's so good. I can't even. When I first heard about it, it was on Fox. So I was like, ugh, cable television horror. And then I thought it was gonna be a remake and you know, like some new age cheesy remake. And I was like, I don't know if I even wanna watch this. But anyways, that's besides the point. The show is freaking awesome. First of all, it's got Gina Davis in it, which I love her. She's a classic, lovely of their own, love Beetlejuice. Just freaking love her. Then it's got the dude, she plays, sorry, she plays the mom. Then you got the dude from Ferris Bueller's Day Off, not Matthew Broderick, but his friend. And he's the dad and he's freaking awesome. Then you got these two girls and it's got a bunch of gore. It's got a bunch of just corruption and possession and twists and turns and you think you know what is gonna happen here and you have no idea what's gonna happen then you got a bunch of green puke happening and it's just you can call it a party I watched it on Hulu but I'm sure you can watch it if you guys have like cable or you can probably watch it on demand or whatever they call it uh, where you can like go through and watch like through Fox if you guys haven't seen it you guys definitely have to watch it because I was totally skeptical and totally being a little bitchy elitist about it and it ended up being really freaking awesome and I totally felt bad for ever judging it but it's so good it's so good you gotta watch it if you have watched it tell me what you think down in the comments box because I thought it was awesome if you don't think it's awesome that's cool too but it was awesome can't deny it I know you kind of liked it even if you didn't you kind of liked it though anyways I think that is it for my January obsessions I hope you guys enjoyed all the things I geeked out about if you did you can give it a thumbs up say hey girl hey down in the comments box if you guys had any favorites or must-haves or obsessions of January also leave those down in the comments box because you know I want to hear them gotta know what you're obsessed with because I gotta try it too and yeah anyways thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time